make an ice cream strong. It's like, yeah, yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, they're good for being outside. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ollie. And I'm Rachel, and welcome to the Envy channel. Today, we're diving into the science of soil and how improving it can transform your garden. Healthy soil is the foundation of a thriving garden. So it provides water, nutrients, and structure for all of your growing plants. In this video, we'll explore what makes soil healthy, common problems that gardeners face, and solutions such as Envy Active Earth, Compost Accelerator, and Root Well. So soil is made up of organic matter, minerals, water and air, and each of those plays a pivotal role in plant growth and health. So we've got a few different soil types here just to sort of show you the differences between them. But so this first one has got a lot of sand in, so this is a sandy soil. On the other end of the scale, we've got a clay soil. And in the middle here, we've got what is essentially the perfect soil. So this is very loamy. We'll discuss more about each soil type later in the video when we'll run some tests to show you the pros and cons of each soil type. All soil is a habitat for microorganisms and creatures. Just like we have the food chain in the ocean or above ground, underground we have a food chain for microorganisms. You have bacteria and fungi which break down nutrients within the soil and break down organic matter. This organic matter can then be absorbed by plants uh, to help them grow, but then you also have bigger insects such as mites which, which can then feed off of the organic matter that the bacteria and fungi break down. These mites can then be consumed by slightly bigger insects and then you've got earthworms closer to the top of the food chain that break down the bigger organic matter and start to produce worm casts which are extremely beneficial for soil. At the top of that food chain, you've got your, your vertebrates and your birds that then feed on these earthworms. It's essential that you look after this habitat. Uh, the creatures that are in there need your help to help them thrive and to help your plants thrive. If you were to go into somebody's home and turn it over, you'd upset that, that, the creatures that live there. If you were to pour chemicals on somebody's house, you'd upset the, the habitats within that house. It's essential that we look after that habitat and look after the microorganisms and creatures that live within it. Two of the fundamental organisms within soil are bacteria and mycorrhizal fungi. Whilst they have some similarities, they play different and crucial roles within the soil structure, especially for plant health. There's two different types of mycorrhizal fungi. Some of them live in the plant roots and some of them live on the plant roots but they help to create hyphae which stretch out into the soil, accessing more water and nutrients for the plants to grow. Bacteria, on the other hand, live on the plant roots and create a biofilm around the roots, protecting them from diseases and pathogens, but also helping to break down nutrients in the soil and solubilize them so that plants can absorb them more easily. We wanted to combine these microorganisms together so that you can replicate that symbiotic relationship at home to give your new or young plants the best start in life. So we've got this young tomato seedling that we've just potted on, and we're gonna apply some root well to it today to give it the best start. Once we've transplanted it into its final home in the greenhouse, we'll give it a second application. Root well is a powdered product that's really easy to use. You simply sprinkle it around the base of your plants and water it in. Each packet will treat up to 80 plants, and it comes packed with slow-release seaweed to help give your plants the nutrients they need in those early stages. And that's it. This plant will now be colonized by the beneficial bacteria and mycorrhizal from root well. We're gonna take it back inside, put it in the windowsill and keep it protected from the frost for the next couple of weeks. So there's two major issues that your soil may suffer from. The first being soil compaction and the second being low nutrient availability. Here we have clay soil. Now clay soil gets particularly compacted. That's because the clay particles are so close together. Now this will lead to root rot in your plants because the water can't properly drain through. So clay soil has a few other problems as well. So in the summer, it can dry out and form like a really cracked, dry layer on the surface where water can't penetrate. It will still have water underneath, but water won't be able to penetrate through the surface. And then in spring, because it's so dense, you'll find that the clay soil takes quite a bit longer to warm up. So anything that you plant out will just take that little bit longer to establish and get going. As we pour water onto all three soil types at the same time, Notice not just how they drain, but also the colour of the water as it passes through. Surprisingly, the water moves through the clay soil first. 
but that's only because the clay is so dense that the water is mostly moving around the outside of it. The water that does drain is thick and opaque, showing how the clay soil holds on to fine particles and suspends them in water. Now once those gaps close, drainage slows dramatically, which is what leads to the waterlogging over time. In the sandy soil, water drains rapidly, staying very clear as it passes through. That's because the large sand particles don't hold on to much, allowing water and nutrients to wash away quickly. And in the loamy soil, we see a balanced drainage pattern. The water comes through slightly darker than in the sand, but much clearer than in clay. This just shows how loamy soil holds onto moisture and nutrients while still allowing for good drainage, making it the best option for plant growth. So one of the biggest problems that gardeners face is dealing with clay soil. So I know in my garden, I've got a lot of clay soil. So what you can do is you can try and improve it by adding in organic matter, whether that's manure or compost or leaf mold. But a, a simpler way of doing that is by adding an active earth. Now this organic soil conditioner contains the right nutrients and beneficial bacteria to encourage the earthworms to move more actively through the soil and create worm casts. And just generally, the product will increase the biological activity in the soil. One of the best ways that you can improve your soil is by adding in your own homemade compost. So not only does it introduce lots of different nutrients into the soil, but it'll also help improve the structure too. We won't go into too much detail about the, the depths of composting in this video, but if you check the description below, there'll be plenty of links there of content that we've already produced. But at its core, composting is essentially, you want to have a good mix of greens and browns, and you want to be turning your compost pile regularly to introduce oxygen in there. So the, the composting process can take quite a long time because you're relying on these macroorganisms and these microorganisms like the, the fungi and the bacteria and the worms to break down all of this waste for you. And especially in cooler weather, these organisms aren't going to be moving quite as much, so they're not going to be breaking down that waste for you. But there are things that you can do to help speed up this process. As I said, by trying to rotate your pile more often, by adding in that oxygen. But if you use a product like Compost Accelerator, then you can speed up the time that it takes for this decomposition to happen. So with this, you're adding in beneficial bacteria, which will heat up your compost. And you're essentially just enhancing the natural process by adding in bacteria, which will already exist in, in, to some extent in the pile. Alternatively, another way that you could get organic matter into your soil is through cover crops or green manure. At the end of the growing season, you can sow things such as alfalfa or mustard that can grow during the off season. And just before these go to seed or flower, cut them right back, leaving them in the soil and allowing the microorganisms to break them down and release nutrients back into the soil. There are lots of varieties of cover crops that you could use from alfalfa to vetches and clovers and buckwheat, but we'd recommend a legume such as red clover. These are able to fix nitrogen from the atmosphere into the soil, ready for your plants to absorb. If you're growing in pots, then nutrients in the soil will flow through a lot quicker than if you're growing in the ground. Because of this, you'll probably have to feed your potted plants a bit more frequently. Before we wrap up, it's worth mentioning soil pH. So we won't go into detail here as we'll cover soil pH in future videos, but different plants do thrive in different pH levels. So testing your soil can help you to make the right adjustments that you need for your particular plant. So you have some plants such as camellias or blueberries, which much prefer acidic soil. And then you've got brassicas like your broccoli and your cabbage, which definitely prefer more alkaline soil. So we've just noticed down in the garden these mushrooms growing up. Um, so this is just in the wood chip that we put down a few years ago. Um, and these mushrooms are essentially just fruiting bodies of the mycorrhizal spores. So it's an indication that we've got a really good mycorrhizal structure under this soil. By putting time and effort into improving your soil, you'll not only help your plants to resist pests and diseases, but you'll also unlock the nutrients that are in the soil. There are also huge environmental benefits to looking after your soil. Improving the drainage in your soil helps to reduce the risk of flooding, it helps to sequester carbon from the environment, and it provides that essential habitat for the microorganisms and creatures that live there. If you found the video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And also head over to our website where you can see the products that were mentioned in today's video, and you can check out the blogs that we've got on soil health and plant care.
Today we're diving into the science of soil and how improving it can transform your garden. Today we're diving into the soi oh, science of style. <laughs> Today we're diving into the soil of science and how improving it can transform your garden. Yeah. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Are you starting on my side? You can, it's uh, your fruit and bodies. <laughs> 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 oh, Let's hold it there. <laughs> we can do.